Hello everybody, Kyle here from Web Dev Simplified, where we make the web easy to understand and accessible for everyone. Now, if you've ever worked on a larger project, you know that as you start to add new features to the project, the project becomes slower and slower and your pages load slower and slower for the user. And to fix this, usually you look at the back end to try to optimize your database connections and other loading on the back end of things, but one of the easiest and quickest ways to increase page load speed is to look at how you are loading in your JavaScript on the front end. I'm going to talk about the three different ways that JavaScript is loaded in this video, I'm going to give you visual examples to help you understand them, as well as talk about their advantages and disadvantages. So let's get started now. Before we can get started talking about the different ways we can load our JavaScript, we first need to understand how our browsers parse our HTML. When an HTML file is downloaded by the browser, it starts at the very top of the HTML file and parses all the way down the HTML file until it reaches the very bottom. As it's doing this, if it comes across resources it needs to download, such as images, it'll send a request to download that and continue parsing even if the resource is not finished downloading, it'll do it in the background. But when it comes to JavaScript, a normal script tag will send a request to download and the parser stops as soon as it hits that script tag and waits until the script tag is downloaded and executed before it'll continue parsing the rest of the HTML file. And this is the first way to load JavaScript, which is the way that most JavaScript is loaded because it's just a single script tag with a source attribute and no other attributes. This is why many times when you see these script tags, you see them at the very bottom of the HTML, so that way the parser can find all of the images and other content before it gets to the JavaScript, which will delay the parser until after the JavaScript is downloaded and executed. So I'll show an example here of a bar that shows you the HTML being downloaded, and as soon as it hits that JavaScript tag, it'll stop parsing the HTML, it'll download the JavaScript, and then it'll run the JavaScript, and not until after the JavaScript is done running will the HTML continue to parse the rest of the document. This is something that we want to try to avoid with our JavaScript in order to make our page speeds faster, so we're going to look at the next way to download JavaScript, which is using the asynchronous tag, which is called async. The asynchronous tag tells our parser that it can download this JavaScript in the background and it'll continue to parse while the JavaScript is being downloaded. And then as soon as the JavaScript is being done downloaded, whether it's before the parser is done or after the parser is done, it'll completely stop parsing, execute the JavaScript, and then resume parsing after the JavaScript is done being executed. And this means that if you have a bunch of asynchronous JavaScript tags in your project, they will be loaded in a random order depending on how fast the actual file downloads, so every time you load the page, they could potentially be run in a different order. This is something that you may not always want, so then we have a third way to load, which is using the defer tag. The defer attribute for a script tag is very similar to the async attribute, except for instead of executing the JavaScript as soon as it's done being downloaded, it waits until the parser is completely finished parsing all of the HTML and then it runs all of the script tags in order that they're listed inside of the HTML document. So this will work exactly the same as not putting any of these async or defer in your script tag so that they'll run in the order that they're defined, but instead of blocking the parsing of the HTML, it'll wait to run until after the HTML is parsed. In my opinion, defer is the most useful of the three ways to load the JavaScript because it allows you to run JavaScript in order which is sometimes very important if you're including certain libraries that depend on other libraries, so you need to load them in a very specific order, or if you don't want to parse, block the parsing at all, so you don't want to use async, since if it finishes downloading, it'll block the parser while it's executing the JavaScript, which depending on the size of the file and the content in it, could be an a non-insignificant amount of time that you're wasting running the JavaScript when you could be doing that after the HTML is parsed and it'll run in order which is very nice to have. Now that we understand how the defer and async attribute work and how JavaScript can either block or not block the parsing of our HTML, let's take a look at a live example of using these different attributes to load JavaScript so that we can better understand how these different attributes affect the load speed of our pages. In order to explain JavaScript loading the best that I can, I have a few different windows open here to help explain. On the right hand side of my screen, I have the console for my web page open, which is going to be logging the different times 
that different events happen in the name that they happen. So for example, we have the starting of our HTML parse, the ending of our HTML parse, and then the document ready function so that we know when our document is ready and able to be run on by JavaScript. On the left, I have Visual Studio Code with a small HTML page and a very large HTML page to be able to test the load speeds of two different size pages. I also have two JavaScript files that are both small and large that we can use to test with the different loading methods. And then finally, at the bottom of my screen, I just have the web page with a button that allows me to go to the large or small version. So right now we're on the small page. And if we click view other, we go to the large page and you can see on the right here, the time for loading has drastically increased from when we're on the small page. So to get started, let's go into the small page, take our script tag here and add our small JavaScript file in here using the normal loading technique without any async or defer. And if you save that, you see that we start the HTML parse, then it gets to this line, this script tag, and it executes what's inside of that JavaScript. So at 5.4 milliseconds, it executes that JavaScript, and then it finishes parsing afterwards. And really, there's not much difference between having that JavaScript, because it takes about seven milliseconds, and removing it to be about two milliseconds. It really doesn't make much of a difference. But if we wanted to load a larger JavaScript file instead, if you save that, you now see that the execution and finishing of our document takes much longer because we have to wait for this normal JavaScript to be loaded before we can finish parsing the rest of our HTML document. In order to get around this, we can use the async tag, for example. So if we put async in here and we save this, you see that now our document is parsed and ready before our asynchronous code actually gets run. And you can kind of ignore the time on this asynchronous one because it's just some inconsistencies with my download of my network. So if you save that, we can refresh it and you can see again, the HTML is parsed before the actual JavaScript is executed. So it's not waiting for that JavaScript to execute. But if we change it to defer here and run that, you see again that the HTML parsing is not blocked by the defer, but the defer code is executed before the ready event of the document is run. So this can be used in order to make our JavaScript run before the on, on don content loaded event is fired from the document. This also allows us to execute our code in order, as we talked about earlier, which is incredibly useful. Now, let's switch over to our large HTML here. Let's load in our JavaScript. We're just going to use the large JavaScript file here. And if you save that, you see that it executes before the actual content is being finished parsing because we're using normal loading. If we change this to async and we save that, you see that our async is actually being executed before the parsing is done this time, as opposed to earlier, it was being parsed afterwards. And if we continue to save this a few times, you will see that in this case, our async is actually executed after our parsing of our HTML. So you can see that asynchronous code with the async tag will be run at different times depending on the download speed of your network, so you cannot guarantee the order of these scripts. And if you need that order and guaranteed, you'll have to use the defer attribute. And if we save that, you see defer, it always executes as soon as the HTML parsing is done and before the document is ready, and it always executes in order. Defer is much easier to understand and much easier to use when you have dependent JavaScript. And asynchronous is much easier to use when you have small JavaScript files that really don't depend on anything else. So you don't care if they load before the page is done being parsed or after the page is done being parsed. For the most part, I would say use defer because it's more reliable and you can always know where it's going to be executed and you don't have to worry about it being parsed before the actual HTML parsing is done, which could slow down the parsing if it's a large executing file. One other thing that I didn't mention is that when you're loading a tag the normal way, such as this, most of the time people will put this script tag at the very end of the body tag down here in order to eliminate the actual pausing of the parsing. And if we save that, you'll see that this normal stuff gets executed right before the document's done being parsed, which means that the document has already loaded up all the image tags and stuff that it needs to. So you may see this a lot, but if you're going to do this, you might as well just use defer and put in the head tag so that it's easier to find your JavaScript files so that they're all in one place as opposed to being stuck at the bottom of the body tag. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. 
I hope you learned something about how you can load JavaScript quicker and make your page load quicker for your end user using the async and defer tags instead of just using the normal script tag to load your JavaScript. If you guys did enjoy this, make sure to leave me a like and a comment down below letting me know what other JavaScript features you want me to discuss in the future. Thank you guys very much for watching. Have a good day.